Modern Monarchy in Japan Inside the Imperial House of Japan It all begins in the year 660 BC when Emperor Jimu, Japan's first emperor, is believed to have founded Japan. For many of us, the words royal family automatically conjure images of the Buckingham Palace balcony, but the Brits are far from the only ones to boast the royal family with a long heritage and history. In fact, the royal family of Japan claims the oldest continuous monarchy in the world tracing their history back to 600 BC. We have grown to understand how a monarchy goes beyond crowns and thrones and involves politics and expansionism, and it could be interesting to see how one family has ruled for so long. So in today's episode, let's look into what many people claim as the world's oldest family of royal descent, the Imperial House of Japan. Welcome to NG's Theoretical. Before we continue, please take a second to subscribe to my channel for more related content. The World's Oldest Monarchy The Imperial House, also referred to as the Imperial Family or the House of Yamato, is the only family of Japan. This Japanese monarchy is the oldest continuous hereditary monarchy in the world, with 126 recognized monarchies today. The Japanese monarchy supposedly began 11 February 660 BC with the legendary Emperor Jimu and continuing up to the current Emperor Naruhito. Emperor Jimu was believed to have descended from the Japanese sun goddess Amaterasu. In Japanese mythology, Amaterasu sends her grandson Ninigi to earth with three sacred treasures, the sword Kusanagi, the jewel Yasakani no Magatama and the mirror Yata no Kagami. He landed in the Izumo province of Japan. Ninigi negotiated rule over the land with Okunishuni no Mikoto, the ruling god at the time, and son-in-law to the storm god Susano. Okunishuni was granted control over religious affairs, thus conceded to Ninigi. Ninigi therefore married one of Susano's descendants, Princess Okonoha Nasukuya. The couple bore three sons, one of whom was Hikoshokodemi no Mikoto, or Hori for short. Hori then married a daughter of the sea goddess Owatosumi, princess to Yotama. This couple bore one son, Ogayaku Fiozu no Mikoto. This is where the drama begins. Upon his son's death, Hori had promised to look away while his wife gave birth, but he let curiosity get the best of him and spied on her. Princess Toyotama was disappointed by her husband's betrayal and returned to the sea. She then sent her younger sister, Princess Tamayori, to help raise Ugafio Kazu. Ugafio Kazu wedded Princess Tamayori upon adulthood. Together they had four sons, the youngest of whom grew to become Emperor Jimu. He and his brothers travelled eastward from the island Kyushu to rule the country from the center. They encountered battles with local chieftains throughout their journey and then found themselves in Yamato. Negehayahi no Mikoto, who also claimed divine descendants, had ruled Yamato then. Upon meeting Jimu, Negeai relinquished his power over him, having recognized his legitimacy. Thus, Yamato became Jimu's seat of power, where he established his royal house around the Chrysanthemum throne. Subsequent emperors claimed descent from this legendary figure, so the same family has occupied the Chrysanthemum throne for so long, over 1,500 years. We must note that emperors from Jimu unto the ninth emperor are regarded to be mythological. Historical authenticity is most believable beginning only with the 10th emperor, 1st century BC, whilst the most verifiable starts only with the 25th emperor, around the 6th century AD. Regardless of historicity, Japan still has claims over the world's oldest continuous hereditary monarchy. Pre-World War II Rose the Japanese revered their emperors for their divine status. However, the connection to the gods merely granted them figurehead status and had limited opportunities to exercise their absolute power. The emperor's subdued influence was mostly apparent during the Edo period, from 1603 to 1867, in which the Togukawa shogunate ruled Japan. The imperial family had lived in Kyoto during this period. Meanwhile, the shogun rulers in Edo, now Tokyo, had overseen political and administrative matters of Japan. The Tokugawa shogunate had grown unstable in its final decades. Amid Western forces drawing closer, while peasants gathered for protests and revolts, Japan had demanded to return under direct imperial rule. Those who remained loyal to the emperor had won out the Tokugawa shogunate. In 1867, the last shogun ruler, Tokugawa Yoshinobu, had stepped down and restored the 122nd emperor Mutsushito as an absolute monarch. 
Records may refer to him as Emperor Meiji since Japanese emperors take as posthumous names after the era of their reign. Japan under Emperor Meiji's reign had started turning into an actual empire as it had begun territorial expansion. Japan acquired Chinese territories including the Korean Peninsula, the Liaodong Peninsula and Taiwan after merging and emerging victorious in the First Sino-Japanese War. Between 1894 and 1895, Japan also won the 1904 and 1905 Russo-Japanese War, which came as a global shock as it was the first instance of an Asian force defeating a European one. The height of Japanese imperialism came during the reign of Meiji's grandson, the 124th Emperor Hiroshito. He ruled the Showa era from 1926 to 1989 as the longest reigning monarch in the history of Japan. Emperor Showa had supreme authority as per the Meiji constitution implemented in 1889. However, in most cases, he only approved policies that his advisors and ministers had crafted. Many historians debate that Emperor Showa's role in the increasing militarization of Japan had seen at the beginning of his reign. They are divided between whether or not Hirohito had been actively involved in Japan's expansionism policies. Still, he remained complicit in uniting with the Axis powers, which ultimately led to the surrender of Japan in 1945. After World War II was over, the United States forced Emperor Hirohito, in whose name Japan had fought the Allies, to renounce any connection to divinity. Hirohito also helped lend legitimacy to Japan's new 1947 constitution, which abolished the Japanese aristocracy, turned its back on the concept of imperial expansion and enshrined the emperor in Japanese law as his symbolic figure. Emperor Showa agreed to the terms of the Allied powers, which included the public disavowal of his and the previous emperor's quasi-divine status through radio broadcast. Nevertheless, Hirohito had lived some 40 more years to witness Japan rise as the second largest economy in the world. Modern Day Rose As of 1947, Japan has been a constitutional monarchy. Sovereignty lies within the people instead of the emperor. As the Japanese constitution states, the emperor shall be the symbol of the state and of the unity of the people. Hirohito then authorized publications of his personal life in an effort to bring the emperor family closer to the public. His popularity kept the imperial system alive. Japan is currently in the Reiwa era under Emperor Naruhito's rule. He succeeded his father, Emperor Emeritus Akihito, having abdicated the throne after 30 years of reigning. Akihito is the first Japanese monarch in over 200 years to hand over his royal duties to his successor before death. Among the official duties that Naruto inherited is precedence over ceremonial activities, ministers of state, secretaries and commissioners which require royal appointment from his majesty the emperor. He also promulgates or enacts the laws that the Diet or Parliamentary of Japan has approved. Needless to say, the emperor also meets with foreign ambassadors as a representative of his country. It's a boys club. Emperor Naruhito has a daughter with Empress Masako named Princess Aiko. Women of the imperial family cannot take on imperial duties as the current house laws stipulate the imperial throne shall be succeeded to by a male offspring in the male line belonging to the imperial lineage. Instead, they may take on jobs at non-profits for the good of the public, by permission of the emperor and they are required to give up their royal titles if they marry commoners. A number of imperialist families' female members have left the monarchy by marrying commoners. Japan has discussed the possibility of changing the rules to allow for female participation over the last few decades due to concerns that the monarchy might die out. Part of the Japanese public supports the amending of the law to allow for female heirs and Prince Naruto himself is believed to support a change in succession laws. I don't think he sticks to the narrow idea that only a male on the throne is acceptable said Mototosugu Akashi, a friend of Emperor Akihito since childhood. The debates fizzled out after Crown Prince Naruto's brother, Prince Akishino, had a son in 2006. He is next in line to the throne after Naruto. According to some sources, the legislation allowing Akihito to step down also mooted the idea of letting female royals stay in the imperial family after they married, but it did not specifically seek to address whether females might one day be allowed to take the throne. Thus, the future of the Japanese monarchy rests on the shoulders of Naruto's 17-year-old nephew, Prince Hishahito. In any case, many Japanese embraced the idea of a female ruler, citing the late Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom 
and the matriarchal origins of the imperial family's mythology. Emperor Naruto's ascension ceremony took place on the 1st of May 2019. He was presented with two of the sacred treasures, the sword Kusanagi representing valor and the jewel Iyasakani no Magatama representing benevolence and was also presented with the third item of imperial regalia, the Miro Yata no Kagami representing wisdom on his enthronement ceremony on October 22, 2019. Finances of the Imperial Family The Japanese monarchy was considered to be among the wealthiest in the world until the end of World War II before 1911. There was no distinction between the imperial crown estates and the emperor's personal properties. When imperial property law was enacted in January 1911, two categories were established, namely hereditary, crown estates and personal properties of the imperial family. The imperial household ministers had the responsibility for observing any judicial proceedings concerning imperial holdings. According to the law, imperial properties were only taxable if there was no conflict within the imperial house or the house laws. However, crown estates could only be used for public or imperially sanctioned undertakings. Personal properties of certain members of the imperial family, such as Empress Dowaga, the Empress, Crown Prince and Crown Princess, the Imperial Grandson and the Consort of the Imperial Grandson, in addition to properties held for Imperial family members who were minors, were exempted from taxation. Property Currently, the primary Imperial properties are the Tokyo Imperial Palace and the Kyoto Imperial Palace. The Togo Palace is located in the larger Alakaska estate which were numerous other imperial family members reside. There are privately and used imperial villas in Hayama, Nasu and the Suzuki Imperial Villa in Shimoda, the Katsura Imperial Villa Shugakuin, Imperial Villa and Sino Imperial Palace are in Kyoto. There are a number of imperial farms, residences and game preserves. The Imperial Household Agency administers the Shosun Imperial, the Reposora in Nara, the imperial properties, which are all owned by the states. Budget The emperor can spend 150 million pounds of public money annually. The imperial palaces are all owned and paid for by the state. On 2 2003, facts about the Japanese imperial family's life and finances were kept secret behind the chrysanthemum curtain. From the epic adventures of Emperor Jimu to the concerns of a declining royal bloodline, you are surely brimming with more questions about the Imperial House of Japan. The Japanese monarchy has intricate stories that span longer than any other family we know of. And to think this is only one aspect of Japanese history, there's just too much culture to consume in one sitting. The Imperial House of Japan might be one of the more exciting yet complicated subjects of Japanese history. It tells a lot about the growth of Japan and a peek into the country's future. Perhaps this peek at some of the highlights would spark some kind of interest that leads you to know more about the rich history of Japan. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I always have more stories to tell. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and why not press the bell button to get notified when a new video is uploaded. Also, do not hesitate to share this video with your friends.